Hello, Jonathan Landeros for Kativ Technologies. In this video, I'm going to show how custom content configured for access via Autodesk Vault can be transferred to Inventor desktop content and accessed via that mechanism. There's a couple of reasons you might approach this, but first, what exactly is Content Center? Let's talk about that. Now it might be easier for me to talk about what Content Center is not. What it isn't is a bunch of folders that you can go and browse through and look for different IPT files, inventor parts, and take them and place them in an assembly, for example. What Content Center is, is a series of libraries. These libraries are actually databases and they have the math required to build a component when we, as users, request them by placing content in an assembly, for example. Now with that brief explanation, let's delve a little deeper. Why would I run these Content Center libraries through Vault versus the Desktop Content Center and what's the difference between those two? Desktop Content. These are libraries with the extension IDCL and they contain the same information as the Vault content. As far as what information is available, the user may not even be able to tell the difference between the two. However, Inventor Desktop Content does not require the Autodesk Data Management Server. can run totally independent of it. The primary users of this? Those who currently aren't using Vault, or that user who needs to disconnect from Vault and go mobile and access content when they do not have access to Vault. They can always access the desktop content and use that in place of the Vault that they may not be connected to at the moment. The other way of running Content Center is via Vault Content. Quite simply, these databases, which have the extension MDF with a log file extension of LDF, are managed by the Autodesk Data Management Server. They're maintained with Vault and move with the Vault databases and can be accessed whenever you're logged into Vault. Another configuration or process, if you will, is one that can be employed by Content Center Administrators, those who are configuring, editing, and modifying the Content Center libraries. In a Vault environment, for example, you probably don't want to go hacking around inside the Vault content and then explain why it's broken and have to restore a Vault database to bring it back. Not fun. But what you can do is transfer that Vault content to Inventor Desktop Content and use the Desktop Content Library as a sandbox to try out things, validate them, make sure they work correctly before you commit them to the Vault server. It saves stress. If something goes wrong in Desktop Content, you can delete it, transfer again, and try it again. No harm, no foul to that precious production server. You get to be a hero, and who doesn't want to be a hero? But enough of the explaining. How do I go ahead and take that Vault Content Center and transfer it to desktop so I can use that sandbox? Here we go. Now, here I am inside of Autodesk Inventor. The first thing I'm going to do is go to Tools and Application Options, and on the Content Center tab, I'm going to make sure that my access options are set to Inventor Desktop Content. And I'll see a message stating that the next time I access content, that's where I'm going to get that from. Why? I'm going to transfer to this library and use it as a sandbox, so I want to make sure that I'm looking in the correct place. This can be done at any time, but I like to get it over with early on. Now, I'll go to the Get Started tab and choose Projects. I've got the project I'm going to work with active, so I'm going to go to the icon here and choose Configure Content Center Libraries. On the screen that pops up, I can see that my access options are set to Inventor Desktop Content. I can see the location of the libraries, but what I really want to do is choose the icon here, which is the Library Transfer Guide. Selecting that, I can now choose whether I'm going to go from the Vault server to Inventor Desktop or vice versa. And I'm going to grab some data out of the Vault server, so that's where I'm going. And I'll choose Next. Inventor will ask me to log into Vault so I can access that data. And after a moment, it'll go ahead and send me to the next screen. Now, 
I can see the libraries that I can transfer and also which libraries currently exist in my desktop content. I have 8020 libraries for aluminum extrusion available in Vault. I also have Hexbolts series NAS 1303 through NAS 1316 available to me. I'm going to work with those and they're selected for me. I'll take that. Click Next and the transfer will begin. Depending on the size of the library, it might take a while, but once it's finished, it'll tell me whether the transfer has been successful or not. This one has. I'll accept it, and I'm ready to go to the next step. Now, once I accept this, one thing to make sure you check, make sure that the library you've just transferred is checked. That makes this Content Center library available to this project, and you'll need to do that. Hit OK. Make sure to save the project, and that's it. The library has been transferred. Now when you start an assembly, for example, those libraries will be available to you. Likewise, when you edit from content, they can also be available to you. So now what you're doing is editing desktop content, safe and sound, away from your production data, which might be in Vault, and make sure that the changes you've got are what you want and they're going to work. Once all is said and done, you can go ahead and transfer this back to Vault and make that the active library. Although one important note, you will have to delete the library out of Vault before you transfer this new library into it. So make sure you've got your backups and whatnot before you go ahead. Once the Inventor Desktop content has been transferred to Vault content, the Inventor content does remain. So you can use this as something to further experiment with or as a backup. Just in case you need it, it will be there. So think about it. There's a lot of ways you can use this and I've really only scratched the surface of just one. So wow, this video did take some time, but I hope the information in it was good and that you find it helpful. So take it, think about it, see how you can apply it to your environment. So I hope you did enjoy this video and have a great day.